This is The Joe Gaither Show on BamaCentral.com. Good afternoon, Tuscaloosa, Internet World, West Alabama. Welcome into The Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. Of course, I am Joe Gaither, and I'm still in Arizona as we are kind of stuck here waiting to get our way back to Tuscaloosa uh, for this big 8 day week. I want to thank everybody who supported us this weekend out at Final Four Weekend. Uh, we'll be going to the national championship game tonight, watching UConn and Purdue. So appreciate, uh, you know, everybody being behind us and following us on the social media machines at Joe Gaither 6 for any of your social media wants, needs, and desires. You can always subscribe to the show, the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on Amazon. Uh, tell the friend about, tell your friends about the show, and we'll just uh, see what we want to do today. There's a lot to get into. Oh my gosh, there's a lot to get into. We are at the hotel pool right here in Phoenix, getting ready for the national championship game. Uh, but I want to talk about a couple of different things today. I want to talk about the spring scrimmage on Saturday. We basically overlooked it in favor of college basketball through the weekend. So we'll talk about the spring scrimmage. Uh, we'll talk about all the kind of things and rumors and whispers that we heard from the scrimmage. And then I want to talk about the latest news, Arkansas basketball hiring John Calipari away from Kentucky and what it means for Alabama, what it could mean for Alabama. I know you're seeing a lot of people concerned about Nate Oates and his future employment with the University of Alabama. Uh, so we'll talk about that that on the program as well. And then lastly, uh, with the uh, with the news of Omar Balo, the, uh, the, the Arizona center going into the transfer portal, I want to talk about the transfer portal and how tricky it is managing whether you want to keep and develop players on your own roster or go into the transfer portal and get guys who have already been developed. It's a tricky balance on how you want to build your program. So without further ado, we'll get right into football. You can always jump into the show again at Joe Gaither 6 for your comments on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And then you can uh, subscribe, rate, and review the show, The Joe Gaither Show, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Amazon. Uh, so Saturday is Alabama's uh, second spring scrimmage. You're looking ahead to this coming Saturday. What is it, April 13th? You guys are probably going to be there in Bryant Denny Stadium for A Day. I hope you're going to be there. I expect, honestly, that A Day is going to look a lot like 2007 8 A Day, where it was really, really packed and supporting Nick Saban's first couple of years. I think it's going to look that way again this Saturday. But let's go back to two days ago, Saturday. Yeah, that's the, that's two days ago. My, my days are all running together out here in Arizona. But two days ago, Saturday, Alabama's having its second spring scrimmage. And look, first we got to, we got to take this with a little grain of salt and, and, and we got to realize that I don't really love spring practice anyways, because spring practice is always, almost always sunshine and roses. This player's working hard. He's developing nicely. Billy's uh, filling his role nicely. You know, Steven's getting into the action and performing well. And I'm really, like, I'm using generic names because I don't want to like disparage anybody, but like pick whatever player you like whether it be on the offensive line, whether it be the quarterback, whether it be a wide receiver or a defensive lineman or a secondary player, this is the time where you're only going to hear pretty much positive positive feedback from the coaches, from the uh, other players. Oh, how do you, you, you ask? I mean, you asked Jaleel Hurley a couple days ago how everybody looks in the defensive back room. Oh, everybody's growing. Everybody's getting the seeking. Like, everything's positive, which it should be because, look, everybody's 0-0, 0-0, and, and, and excited about the new season. But I just don't know how much media, how much, the, 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 how much media attention is really like how, how much you can really take, how much it really is going to matter for the fall. Uh, so let's get into what we heard, anyways. What we heard was the offense basically got the better of the defense, but they got the better of the defense through the air when they could protect the passer. It sounds like the Alabama offensive line had themselves a bit of a difficult day. Uh, protecting the passer and uh, watching Alabama football over the last couple of years, you're used to that, and that's a little bit concerning, but you're still working in new terminology. I mean, everything is new. That's the other reason why a lot of these notes that are heard, nuggets that I've got, is that I, I, I mean, I think they're valid news and notes, absolutely, or I wouldn't be bringing them to you, but I don't know how much they're going. it's going to matter for the fall as everything is still so, so new. You're in implementation mode uh, on both the offense and the defensive side of the football. And so to hear that the offense was ahead of them, well, that doesn't surprise me a single bit because 
I think the translation is a bit easier uh, offensively speaking than it is defensively speaking. The translation, I mean, a, a go route is a go route, whether you want to call it a nine route or a go route or a fly route. I mean, whatever you want to call it, one, two, whatever terminology you want to use, it's still, you know, the same route. Uh, and so I think offensively, the terminology, the translation period, it, it goes a bit easier. Uh, you get a lot of buzz about Ty Simpson pushing the ball down the field to Emmanuel Henderson and Kobe Prentice. And look, here's the thing I don't want to do this year. I don't want to go into uh, look when Saturday is over, when eight is over. I don't want to say, oh, does Alabama have a quarterback controversy? Because I think Ty Simpson is going to look good on Saturday in eight day. And I do believe the the, report, the reports that I got, the the reports that I read, that he looked good this past Saturday. But it's still Jalen Milrow's job. It's still Jalen Milrow's team. You, you heard what you heard this past Saturday, what, I think six of nine for Jalen Milrow or so and struggled to get the ball down the field, but checked it down very nicely. You're operating with different circumstances with different guys. Jalen Milrow going against the ones, you know, and, and, and basically – I think it's a little more scripted defensively. Uh, some of these scrimmages, that's, that's why I don't know what the value is. Uh, now, what you did here was that Caleb Odom made himself a hell of a catch in the end zone from Dylan Lonergan. And so it sounds like you're getting like really good chemistry from the quarterbacks to the receivers, whether it be Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, Dylan Lonergan, or Austin Mack. It kind of sounded like Austin Mack had a difficult day, but he's still really, really young. Uh, I don't know. Like, look, the next game is. <laughs> end of August, 1st of September. So, like, you've got plenty of plenty of time to work all this out. And so, like, my meter of, oh, does this make me concerned or does this make me you really, like, heightened sense of interest? No, I'm not really that interested in it. I'm interested in it because it's football and because it's Alabama football and that's my job. But, like, do I think that it is going to determine these couple of weeks are determining the snaps in September? No, I don't. I don't. I think that this is just kind of the foundational period of spring, pre uh, you know, of the new program. You're going to go through summer and then fall. Ooh, fall camp is really where the competition battles are going to ramp up. And it's going to be about who spent the most time in the summer in their playbooks, who's understood the terminology, who's understanding the concepts throughout the summer into fall camp. Uh, and so, yeah, you get reports that Keon Keeley looked good, you know, rushing the passer. And that's really encouraging. And you get reports that, oh, Ty Simpson looked really accurate throwing the ball down the field. And all that's encouraging as well. But I just think that, I uh, pump the brakes on, on, oh my gosh, all this is be all end all stuff. I, this is just kind of a progress reports for everybody. You got good news and uh, kind of favorable reports on Tim Smith and on, uh, and, on, and on Malachi Moore. Look, I think defensively, the biggest issue for Alabama is going to be the second is going to be the corners is going to be the experience at corners. You got Damani Jackson and Jaleel Hurley out there. You're hearing good things about Xavier Brown and Zay Mincy as well. So you get those guys um, reps and experience. I mean, you got a lot of freshmen in that room. Then, uh, but you got a lot of talent. You got a lot of talent. I'm really encouraged though with Malachi Moore and Keon Sab basically kind of pulling the strings from the, from the back. And Devontae Smith as well. Devontae Smith hasn't really got a whole lot of playing time through his Alabama career, but he is, what, third? He's going into his third or fourth year in the Alabama system. So the secondary, you're going to have a lot of experience in the safety room, but they're going to have to help out the corners. So I think that when you're hearing, oh, Alabama tore him up in the passing game, it just – Kind of is it kind of goes along with it with the inexperience, the the young guys. You're going to get burned in live action from time, uh, especially early in their careers. When look, Emmanuel Henderson, Kobe Prentiss, they're good players as well. Uh, and so Jeremy Bernard, like you, you're going up against really good receivers. Uh, and so I'm not really at all surprised that the Alabama offense sounded like they got the better of the Alabama defense in this past weekend scrimmage. Uh, yeah, so all my notes, scrimmage, who cares, spring ball, hard to quantify, Ty Simpson. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to talk, start a quarterback controversy. You did get good reports of Ty Simpson this weekend, and I think that this coming up Saturday, he's going to perform very well, but it's still Jalen Miller's team. I think Jalen Miller is going to have to do awful, awful, awful things to lose his job, and I don't really foresee that happening, uh, I, I don't, I don't really foresee a world in which that happens. Uh, let's talk about the offensive line because uh, because it did seem to struggle in pass protection a bit. 
but you had from left to right, you had Elijah Pritchett, Tyler Booker, James Brockermeyer, Jaden Roberts, and Wilkin Formby. And this is kind of an interesting lineup, in my opinion, for two reasons. One, you still got the Parker Brailsford absence at center. And can James Brockermeyer take advantage of take advantage of his opportunities? You don't want to basically say you, you don't want James Brockermeyer to wish Brailsford to stay away, and, and that's how he wins the job. But this is a great opportunity for him to show that he can man the center position and you know snap it well. You hear the snaps are going fine and and hold up. Is he undersized? Yes, he is. But so is Brailsford. It's a huge moment uh, in James Brockermeyer's career. While Brailsford is kind of going through a little personal issue, you got to impress on the field. And, uh, and I think this is his real chance to win the job. I think he thought uh, going into the spring before Brailsford transferred into Alabama that it was going to be his job. Uh, and now a little competition uh, gets thrown into the fact, gets thrown into the mix. I think uh, James Brockermeyer has a real opportunity right here to uh, to take a huge step forward uh, on on Parker Brailsford. And then the other thing is right tackle, Wilkin Formby. You've been rotating, it seems like, right tackles throughout the spring. And we talked about what you're going to do at the tackle position, especially with Caden Proctor's pending return to this Alabama offensive line. And so, like, that's another factor. Are you going to freak out about protection issues when you don't have – what's likely going to be a starting tackle on this team right now? No. Uh, so what can Will can, can Will conform be hold on to that right tackle position? And can he play it well enough to where when Caden Proctor returns, is Proctor the odd man out? Is Pritchett the odd man out at, at left tackle? Or does Will conform be get bumped out uh, in a switch? Elijah Pritchett over to the right tackle. Uh, we last saw, the last time we were at practice, Miles McVay. Uh, manning the right tackle position. And while, look, we're out in Arizona, we didn't get to see the scrimmage, I just think it's very interesting. I think these tackle positions are going to be uh, something to watch once we get into fall camp, especially once Hayden Proctor returns to the, uh, to the Crimson Tide program. Right now, you got Pritchett on the left, you got Will Conformby or Miles McVay on the right, and it sounds like uh, Nequil Bur uh, uh, Bertram is the backup left tackle, the transfer from Texas A&M. But it's all going to change again when Caden Proctor re-enters the transfer portal officially and comes back to the capstone. So that's why I, I you don't know how much real you know stock to put into these spring scrimmages and these spring practices because everything's going to change. The transfer portal is going to open up after a day. Oh, look, the transfer portal opens up. I think on, on Monday, Monday week, week from week from today. I think it's on the fifteenth. So. It opens up, and how many of these Alabama football players are going to go in the portal? Well, I don't think a whole lot, but you never know who could. Things will change uh, in a matter of seven days when the portal opens, and then obviously once you get to fall camp in August. Uh, as you keep going down my, my, my notes here, I do want to talk about Parker Brailsford. Coach, uh, Coach Kevin, Kalen DeBoer did address Parker Brailsford on Saturday and basically said it's not a football issue and it's not a transfer issue. Uh, going back to, I think it was last Wednesday that we did talk about Parker Brailsford on, on the program. I just think he's going through a lot of changes. He's a young man, 17, 18, 19 years old. Uh, he's, you know, he's changed schools. Uh, he's had his, his position coach changed on him and his offensive coordinator changed on him. Lots of scenario, lots of sceneries, different new classes, new, new everything. I think he's just kind of, uh, experiencing a little bit of an overwhelmed nature and maybe uh, maybe you get him settled into Tuscaloosa a little bit more and uh, you get him back on this football team. Maybe you don't even have him for the rest of, for the, for the rest of this week, spring practice. You're not going to see – maybe you don't see him on A-Day. I still don't think that that's that big of a deal. You get him, you know, comfortable with Tuscaloosa and comfortable with, uh, you know, with, with the Alabama program. What, summer two starts uh, May 28th, I believe. So, so summer one starts May 28th. So get him enrolled for summer one classes and get him going with the rest of the uh, – you're going to have, what, four, five, six uh, summer enrollees from a freshman standpoint. Get him enrolled with those guys and uh, br and get him integrated into the program right there. I don't think it's a huge concern right now, Parker Brailsford not being a part of this Alabama football team. Oh, uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 Connor Talty, open kick position. All right, one funny thing. Just uh, I think Connor Talty is going to be Alabama's place kicker this year. He has huge, huge, huge shoes to fill in Will Reichert. But uh, Caitlin DeBoer was asked about the kicker position on Saturday. And while he didn't mention Talty by name, he did say it's an open uh, it's an open kicking competition. I think there's 
Upton Belafont is the other kicker that's kind of here at play. Uh, but the funny thing to me was, oh, Caitlin DeBoer says, oh, they're all keeping their head down just like they should be doing the room tracks up. It's like nobody wants to hear about the kickers. Nobody wants to hear about the kickers unless they're missing kicks. And so that's going to be an interesting area for Alabama this year. Alabama's been five years with Will Reichert and just – literally security and no anxiety every i mean look will wasn't absolutely perfect but he was damn close to it uh he was a lot closer uh, to perfection than alabama fans have been used to from the kicking position and so it's going to be interesting to see how connor talty moves into those uh moves into those shoes that's kind of all my practice notes. That's kind of all my spring uh, scrimmage notes. Obviously, we're going to get back to Tuscaloosa uh, this week, and we will be all over A-Day on Saturday. And I think you're going to be able to take more from A-Day. I'll be able to take more from A-Day because everything that I'm getting right now is secondhand information. And while I do trust a lot of the, the information that I'm getting, I like to see it with my own eyes. And so I'm not really moved. My needle for football is kind of still way down here, way down to uh, at zero. Maybe Saturday when I see it for myself, see a full eight-day scrimmage, uh, maybe it'll tip back up and, and, and get a – maybe it'll be more energized for football. Now, one interesting thing about the eight-day game, you saw – what was it, Auburn this past weekend with their eight-day game and nobody showed up and not that, that's not a big surprise – Auburn spotted the defense. They did an offense first defense, right? They did an offense first defense. They spotted the defense 27 points. It was a 27 0 start for the defense. And they basically went from there. And that made me wonder or made me think uh, how will Kalen DeBoer and this new staff structure 8A? Look, we've been used to 8A for 17 years being Team Crimson versus Team White. And, you know, it's the first team offense in white right yep and the first team defense in crimson and then you get the second team offense for second you know and vice versa winners get steak losers get uh beanie weenies and it's a it's treated like a traditional football game it's 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 orchestrated and officiated like an like a real football game i hope that kaylin DeBoer sticks with that format i do just selfishly speaking because i don't like the gimmicky oh defense gets two points for a sack oh defense gets one point for a tackle for loss or you know you're tallying points for little statistics and you're pitting offense for i, I don't like that uh just from an aesthetic standpoint uh now kaylin DeBoer, they can do whatever they want to and that will be part of the fun getting to a day and seeing how it's structured but why mess with a good formula? I think you've got a good formula right now, Team Crimson versus Team White, and we will see if that holds up, if that formula continues on Saturday at 8 day. So let's talk about basketball, right? Uh, we're out here at the Final Four. You can see we're out here at the, at the hotel pool. We appreciate Chris Walsh uh, putting us on right here on Bama Central. You can always follow the show, the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central by subscribing to the Bama Central YouTube channel. You can check out all our uh, in-depth videos from inside the locker room this past week in, uh, in Phoenix and much, much more. But let's talk about basketball because, look, yesterday's program was all about breaking down the loss to UConn and starting to talk about roster construction. I gave you my gut feeling about what everybody's going to do uh, on, on the team. I could easily be wrong about everything I said yesterday. Again, it's a gut feeling. But I'm out yesterday in Phoenix, and I want to thank the uh, people of the Final Four. They put on a concert uh blew my face off. I saw the Black Keys and I saw Mumford and Sons back to back at some fan festival. And I really appreciate that. But I'm out there and I'm getting texts from friends and seeing notifications. Oh my gosh, John Calipari to Arkansas. And we have not really talked about the Arkansas coaching search on the program yet. Uh, but I was watching it kind of, you know, laughing here and there. Jerome Tang turns them down. Will Wade turns them down. Chris Beard uh, turns them down. And so, like, they're swinging and missing, swinging and missing. And you're sitting here thinking, ha, 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 Arkansas, this is kind of funny for a moment. And then they swing big last night. I mean, you can define it big as you want, but John Calipari is one of the biggest coaching names in college basketball, still active today. And obviously, you haven't won a national championship since, what was that, 20? Uh, they, they got to the Final Four in 2015. Uh, so it's been a while since uh, since Kentucky has been back in the, you know, in the Final Four scene. And I think they've only won one SEC cha championship. I think that was 2019, 2020, uh, that they won a regular season championship. Uh, and, and so, like, yeah, they've taken a little bit of a step back. 
And Coach Calipari has had a couple of seasons where he hasn't really had a, a whole lot of postseason success, but he's still a huge, 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 huge name and a great recruiter. Look at that Dagum uh, Kentucky recruiting class, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But Arkansas swings, and they get Calipari to leave Kentucky to come to Arkansas. And part of that is interesting to me because I think that Calipari might have been feeling like he was wearing out his welcome. It sounded like they were going to do a one-year kind of, let's see if we can get this thing back on track for one more time, and maybe we'll uh, part ways next season. But no, Calipari jumps on it, jumps at the opportunity to, uh, I guess, go to greener pastures, uh, define greener yourself, uh, Arkansas versus, versus Kentucky. But I think he sees a fresh start maybe a, a, as a good option for him in his career. And Arkansas, allegedly, reports or rumors are suggesting that they're going to put an NIL bill of $6 million a season. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a huge problem, at least recruiting uh, against Coach Calipari with the Waltons and the Tysons of the world behind the Arkansas program. Uh, and that's going to be something to deal with. Uh, but first and foremost, Kentucky's got to hire a coach. Kentucky's got to fill their job. And Kentucky is, look, we've just hit on it, hasn't been as successful in the last couple of years. Obviously, hasn't been as successful as maybe their recruiting rankings should, should, should lend them. But it's still Kentucky. It's still some of the one of the bluest of blue bloods in college basketball. It's probably a top three, top two coaching job in the country. I mean, I know UCLA isn't quite UCLA anymore, and uh, it's basically Carolina and Duke as the most prestigious. And I know UConn. It's the UConn moment. They've been on top for the last two years, but UConn is more of a a new blood than a blue blood. It's Kentucky. It is. And so, with that being said. NATO, it's so oh, let's get this out of the way. NATO is one of their prime candidates, is one of their prime targets, apparently, allegedly. We'll say that it has been leaked. It's been if you look on Bet Online, Bet Kentucky, if you look at uh, Las Vegas odds, this side or the other, Coach Oates is one of the coaches that is that has favorable odds. Does that make him a candidate or not? You can decide that. But what I believe is the $18 million buyout that Coach Oates, uh, you know, the, the contract extension that Coach Oates signed just before the SEC tournament, which a lot of people, look, you lost to Florida that night in a bad way, ugly loss. And a lot of people were thinking, oh, terrible. Why are you giving Coach Oates a contract extension? He's only been to the Sweet 16. Oh, you just got knocked out in, in the SEC tournament uh, in bad fashion. That's why. This is why. I mean, yeah, the Final Four run is part of it. And you, you always kind of felt like Coach Oates had that potential uh, and does continue to have that potential to take Alabama back to a Final Four. But you extend him because of what you've seen over college basketball's landscape this year. Louisville's job opened, uh, Arkansas's job opened, and now Kentucky's job is open, Michigan's job opened. And so, like, lots of these big jobs opened right after the contract extension hits. And so it prevents, uh, it prevents some of those other suitors. But Kentucky is different, in my opinion. $18 million buyout to Big Blue Nation, I don't think is anything. If you listen to all the people in uh, Kentucky circles, it sounded like they had the $33 million sitting there on standby, ready to fire Coach Calipari if Mitch Gaspard was going to pull the trigger. Mitch Gaspard did not end up doing that. And so, you know, obviously, they didn't spend that $33 million. But if they've got the $33 million on standby to fire John Calipari, they've certainly got $18 million on standby to buy out Nate Oates. So that puts it squarely on Nate Oates, really. And what do I know about Nate Oates? Well, I know that he's exuded or given off that he loves Tuscaloosa, and he has exuded that he loves Alabama. It's still Kentucky, and it's still a blue blood, but I think that uh, Coach Oates has about everything that he wants right here in, in Alabama. Now, this is just speculation from right outside the room. You know, this is just I'm walk, looking inside. Uh, I'm not in Coach Oates' circles. I don't know what his agents talk about, and I don't know what his wife uh, or what, what their families are talking about. Um, but I think if I'm a betting man, uh, it sounds like Coach Oates is going to stay at Alabama. I would bet on him staying at Alabama. If you believe in Shirley Donovan, Shirley Donovan is one of the most plugged-in college basketball insiders, basically says that they're not even going to give Coach Oates a call, that he's not going to be interested. So if you're worried about Coach Oates leaving for Kentucky, I think that a little bit of the worry is valid, but only because Kentucky is who they are, a blue-blood program. 
I think that NATO, it's at its core, loves Alabama, and your concern shouldn't be higher than maybe five or ten percent uh, that that he that he would leave Tuscaloosa. I think I, th- I think it's in that low number. The money would have to be absolutely absurd. Uh, it, it would have to be a level that Coach Oates would say, uh, I, "I literally cannot turn this down." Um, but outside of just the money factor, I think you've got pretty much everything you want here in Tuscaloosa. The practice facilities are nice. You're getting good NIL, uh, good NIL good coffers. Your recruiting is going very, very well. I mean, look what you got coming in uh, this coming up season. What is it? Number six recruiting class, two McDonald's All-Americans. So, like, what are you doing here at Alabama? What, what, what can you do at Kentucky that you're not doing at Alabama right now? I mean, you took Alabama to a Final Four. Uh, when's the last time Kentucky's been to a Nine years ago. Nine years ago. So uh, you've proven that whatever you can do at Kentucky, you can do at Alabama, and you've already been doing it for five years. You built your base up for five years, and you're going to go into what seems like a really, really, really exciting sixth year. And that's where I want to lead to next. Uh, I mean, look, you can talk about the Kentucky coaching search all you want. You're seeing Dan Hurley uh, uh, being thrown out there. I don't think Dan Hurley's got any interest in leaving UConn. But I do think, just like with Nate Oates, you've got a 5 to 10% chance if, you, if, if, if Kentucky backs up the Brinks trucks and you know pulls out all the stops, I'm sure that Hurley will at least listen. You're seeing Scott Drew being mentioned a whole lot, and you're seeing Billy Donovan being mentioned a whole lot. I think that Billy Donovan's an interesting name. I think that's a highly, uh, you know, from a competitive standpoint, a concerning name from the Alabama standpoint. I think he's shown, obviously, the back-to-back national championships at Florida uh, to be a great recruiter and a really good X's and O's coach. Obviously, he spent a lot of time in the pros over the last decade. Uh, Billy Donovan would be a very, very interesting name. And I think Billy Donovan and Scott Drew are probably your top two realistic candidates. Uh, I know everybody wants to talk about Nate Oates. But I think that uh, I think Nate Oates is going to be safe and sound here in Tuscaloosa. So what I want to get into last to finish the program, and of course I want to thank everybody who's watching us. I see a lot of you guys are watching us live today, and you can subscribe to us at Joe Gaither Six on so any social media: Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram at Joe Gaither Six. You can subscribe, rate, and review the show. Uh, the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on Amazon. I appreciate everybody who's checking out the show daily. Uh, or most daily. Let's talk about the transfer portal a little bit. Yesterday on the show, we went through the roster, and I'll just pull it up and go through it real quickly. Yesterday on the show, we went through the roster and we kind of speculated, speculated, keyword speculated on who would be coming back and who would be leaving. And, you you know, we'll go right through it. Uh, on the coming back list, specu- uh, this is speculation, I had Jaron Stevenson, Mark Sears, Latrell Reitzel, Sam Walters, Rylan Griffin, Chris Parker, and Muhammad Diabati. And that would be great. Uh, you, 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 you include those with the four incoming uh, incoming players, three out of, the, uh, out of the high school ranks and one of the transfer portal, Houston Millette with the three high school players, Nas Cunningham, uh, Darian Reed, and Aiden Cheryl. So you've got a roster that has two spots available in this scenario. And so you, with the scenario, let's react to what we saw this morning. Omar Balo, Arizona center, goes into the transfer portal. And look, you remember in December, he's one of the three big men that tore Alabama a new one. You had Edie, Cockburner, and Balo back-to-back-to-back weeks. And you're sitting here watching Alabama basketball, and you're thinking, oh, my gosh, where's Charles Mediaco? We could use a rim protector. And so Omar Balo becomes, oh, my gosh, uh, a, a gold star, a diamond type. Pro- you know, he, he becomes a perfect fit, a perfect kind of a prospect for this NATO. It's, hey, let's get a rim protector and let's get an elite rim protector. And so, of course, I think you're going to go after elite talent with those two roster, with these hypothetical two roster positions open. But let's think about it for a minute. Think about Sam Walters. Think about Mohamed Diabate. Uh, let's take those two guys, right? Sam Walters has a beautiful shot, and we talked about that yesterday. His offensive fit, uh, as far as far as a scorer goes, is very, very good in the system. But he is still undersized and maybe a little understrengthed uh, as far as college ba- for, 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 for Division One college basketball for SEC college basketball, and that can be fixed. Not under size, but under strength. Uh, his strength can he can he can get stronger over the next six months for the, for next year's season. Same with Muhammad Diabate. His shot that's kind of his deficiency. 
he can improve his shot over the next six months, right? Uh, these guys can improve over the next six months and get ready for the next season. Or do you usher them into the transfer portal and say there's enough talent out there that I'm going to get players that are better than Mohamed Diabate or Sam Walters? That's the silly, that's the tricky game you're playing here. Nate Oates now last year really didn't have a choice because a lot of people left. You weren't dealing with, oh, do I need to push somebody out or uh, can I recruit over them? Or, you know, last year he was filling space. You you had lots of space to fill uh, due to a small recruiting class and due to an outgoing class to the NBA and outgoing class to the transfer portal. It's a tricky situation because, look, I look at the roster and I think, shoot, you'd love to have every, every single one of them back. You get them all back. Uh, you get them all back. You add Aiden Cheryl. You add Nas Cunningham and, uh, and Darian Reed and Houston Millette, and you might be a number one team. Uh, you, you might go, be going for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Uh, but could it be better? And so it's like, oh, do you measure? You, how do you value what you already have, what you could have? Uh, and, and so I think that ma makes for a very, very tough distinction for these coaches as they're playing portal combat. I want, you, I want to encourage you to follow my man, Blake Byler. Blake Byler at 45 on the Twitter machine. He's compiling right now our roster tracker for Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. Uh, basically, he's got a... A very definitive, here's the guys who can leave, here's the guys who can stay, here's the guy, you know, everything. And as things move and change, he's going to be editing that. And it's going to be an interesting week because I think the basketball news is going to be, look, the guys who are going to the portal, I think they're not going to wait. And, yeah, I said it yesterday uh, that I thought it was probably going to be Davin Cosby and Nick Pringle and Mohamed Wagi going into the portal. And, like, they're perfect examples. Devin Cosby was a freshman this year who shined in certain moments, shined when given opportunities. But do, do you encourage Devin Cosby to go in the transfer portal because you can go out and get a contributor that can shoot a bit better or that can be a bit longer or can defend a bit be, uh, a bit, bit, bit harder? Um, it's a tricky, tricky, tricky situation. And so while maybe you'd like to have Devin Cosby back, maybe you'd like him to go to the, in the transfer portal. Uh, it, it's a very hard balance for these coaches as so many players are going to the portal. I mean, you, you wouldn't have expected Omar Balo to go to the transfer portal, but I guess he's going in there to try to see if he can get a big old bag before he goes into the NBA. Uh, that would be a very, very intriguing name uh, for Alabama to get. Now, one more intriguing name for Alabama to be looking out for, and I want to uh, dispel a rumor for you or put it on your radar. Uh, Bronny James is in the transfer portal and in the NBA draft. We talk, I don't know if we've talked about it on the program yet or not, but basically Bronny James, all the crazy media outlets are like, oh, he's going into the NBA draft. He's a terrible player. He's not going to get drafted. He's, gonna, he's going to get evaluated. He's going to the transfer portal. He's going to play college basketball next season. You might have seen on Antonio Brown's kind of off-brand Alabama website. I don't know if you're following Antonio Brown or not. Uh, Antonio Brown, former NFL wide receiver, current crazy person. Uh, but he's dabbled into sports reporting, and he's been unusually right about a few things. Not everything, a few things. Well, we want to make this <laughs> perfectly clear. He's been unusually right about a few things. Uh, and yesterday, he goes on to his little Alabama offshoot brand and says that Ronnie James is going to transfer to Alabama. Do I think that, that that's likely? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, my man Blake Byler put me on that uh, Duquesne's head, head, head coach is one of LeBron James' former high school, uh, high school teammates, so he's very likely going to be transferring to Duquesne. Uh, but just put it on your radar. Maybe it's one of those crazy things that Antonio Brown is right about. He is – Unusual, for sure. Very, very unusual on the social media machines. But he's been right about some things uh, since he started to dabble into the reporting game. So do I think it's likely? No, I don't think it's likely. Would Bronny be a good fit here at Alabama? I think he would be as far as a wing defender. Now, not a really good shooter. That would be a huge deficiency. But athletic defender, good passer. Uh, I think he would fill up the blue collar points. Uh, but the scoring, maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't be as good offensively as Alabama would want. 
uh, in the transfer portal. So it's a tricky situation. Do you stick with what you got and develop the Sam Walters, Mohamed Diabates of the world and potentially the David Cosby's of the world? Or do you look for the transfer portal and maybe try to get these one-year wonders or two-year wonders mercenaries? I mean, the Trail right, so was a great pickup. The Trail right, so you go out and get them. Now, you needed him because you're filling numbers, but you go out and get him and you're going to have him probably for two years. Uh, and he's going to be, he was a heck of a scorer this year. I think he's going to be even better next year in the system in a little bit more, more increased role. Uh, so the transfer portal can be extremely helpful, but it is a very, very tricky situation as well. That's going to do it for our show today. We're going to uh, cut out of here and go to the national championship game. Unfortunately, Alabama's not in it, but we're still going to enjoy it. Oh, it's going to be a hell of a game, and I'm expecting a great atmosphere between UConn and Purdue. There was a lot of Purdue people in our current hotel and down at the Final Four for that first game. We talked about that yesterday, how many Purdue people showed out. Uh, it'll be crazy to see Zach Heaney, uh, Zach Heaney and Donovan Klingon going head-to-head. -head. I do think that UConn is going to win. Uh, but I think it's going to be a hell of a college basketball game tonight uh, over there at State Farm Stadium. So I really appreciate everybody who's followed us this weekend. Uh, you can check me out. I'm putting videos and, uh, and, and, and photos on pretty much any of my social media feeds at Joe Gaither 6 on your favorite social media feed. Uh, it's been a blast, and we're going to continue it by going to the national championship game tonight. And then we will get back to Tuscaloosa and be all in on A-Day. All in on A-Day with a little bit of eye on the college basketball transfer portal and maybe we'll keep an eye whew, we'll keep an eye on we will definitely keep an eye on that Kentucky coaching search as we'll see who they uh, who they hire because uh, the dominoes will continue to fall uh, whenever something so, something so big like that happens. Uh, that's gonna do it for our show today. I want to thank everybody who subscribed to the show the Joe Gaither show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on Amazon. You can watch the show always on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. Thanks for joining us on today's edition of The Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central. Keep up with Joe on all his social media pages at Joe Gaither 6. Subscribe, rate, and review the show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and be sure to read us daily at BamaCentral.com.